Here are the most inappropriate advertising campaigns ever. Number 9. White versus Black Sony has had a couple run-ins with controversial ads in the past, but its White versus Black PSP campaign has to take the cake. When the PSP was first released in 2004, the only available color was black. That is, until Sony decided to spice things up a little bit and release a white version of the PSP. To promote the release of its new colored PSP, Sony decided to pit the two colors against each other. The images released features a white female dressed in all white in some sort of combat with a black female in solid black clothing. Since the white PSP was the new one, the images depicted the white female triumphing over the black female with one ad even showing the white woman grabbing the black woman's chin as if she were in control of the woman. Now, it didn't take long for certain people to start clamoring and using the word racist as their reasoning was that it was another example of white people having more power. Sony quickly removed the ads once the controversy started to avoid any sort of negative activity. Seriously, who are those people that let something like this slip past the approval stage? Number 8. Bread for Everyone Henry S. Levy & Sons, popularly known as Levy's, was a bakery based in Brooklyn, New York, most famous for its rye bread. But in order to gain more customers, it used a marketing campaign that wasn't exactly the greatest in order to get more people to eat its bread. Well, a campaign spent selling rye bread to only Jewish people would be a campaign squandered and preaching to the converted, apparently, in the ad director's own words. Their ads were images of various people from different races and ethnicities eating a sandwich on Levy's rye bread. Above and below the image was text that stated, You don't have to be Jewish to love Levy's. Because of the cultural attitudes at the time, no one really found it all that racist at the time to imply only Jewish people ate rye bread. However, if this ad came out today, can you guys imagine the Twitter outrage? Number 7. Whoops, we didn't mean that. Heinz Tomato Ketchup actually created even more exposure with its unintentional advertising ploy. Back in 2015, Heinz printed QR codes on every bottle of ketchup that linked to the website of Heinz Tomato Ketchup. First of all, who really uses QR codes anyways? But anyways, at least they were trying to take advantage of modern technology. What Heinz didn't know was how close their website was to needing to renewing its domain. The website fell into public domain and a very interesting website owner happened to buy the domain back. Towards the end of 2015, the website domain was owned by a porn site and everyone who enjoyed Heinz Ketchup and wanted to check out the code on the bottle were brought to disturbing images and videos all thanks to the greatest ketchup company out there. Once Heinz realized that the code actually linked to, they took the bottles off the shelves and reprinted the bottles to make sure their ketchup wasn't that hardcore again. Number 6. Maybe not? Just do it? Not even Nike is safe from marking blunders. Nike somehow released a TV commercial that was a little too gory for a family to see on the telly. The commercial starred a famous three-time Olympian runner, Susie Favor Hamilton. You would think having a famous Olympic runner to star in a commercial advertising Nike's running shoes is a sure way to resonate with customers, but Nike didn't exactly do things right. The commercial had Hamilton getting finished with a bath in a dark, spooky house. While brushing her hair, she opens the mirror cupboard and puts her comb inside. As Hamilton shuts the mirror in a classic horror way, there's a guy with a Jason mask and overall standing behind her and she screams. As this dude rushes her with his chainsaw, she's able to slip out the door and outrun the guy in the mask because of her new Nikes. Doesn't sound that bad, right? Just a commercial inspired by classic horror movies. Well, the ad was banned because of the mood of the commercial. Let's be honest, anytime a dude with a chainsaw is trying to kill someone, it's unsettling to anybody. After Hamilton escapes, words pop up on the screen that read, Why sport? You'll live longer. Nike's classic movie remake was meant to be a throwback, but all it did was strike fear into most people across the world. Number 5. Some Really Intense Business Meetings In case you guys didn't know, a Benetton Group is a global fashion brand based in Italy. The name comes from the Benetton family who founded the company in 1965. Why a fashion group has any business in politics is beyond me, but at one point they sure were. Benetton released a series of ads depicting many high-positioned government officials in a strange, uh, let's just say, uh, intimate meeting. By that, of course, I meant the ads depicted world leaders in a very intense lip-locking session. 
with shots showing President Barack Obama kissing his Venezuelan counterpart Hugo Chavez and Mahmoud Abbas embracing Benjamin Netanyahu, the ads were just really weird. Benetton wanted people to embrace peace all over the world, but really, does anyone want to see world leaders lip-locking while wearing business suits? Number four, who really falls for this? Remember back in the day when pretty much if you were a guy, you were bombarded with spam emails that promised you you could make your junk bigger? Well, maybe girls got this too, but I'm not too sure. Well, let's uh, take these spam emails to the big stage. Enzyme is an herbal nutritional supplement that supposedly promotes, quote, natural male enhancement, which is a euphemism for enhancing erectile function. However, its effectiveness was called into doubt and the claims of the manufacturer had been under scrutiny from various state and federal organizations. This campaign failed basically because of the straight-up lies told within the marketing. The object of the ads was to make people think they could get their dick bigger by taking a wonder pill. Now, the ads were actually unintentionally, or maybe intentionally, hilarious, as it showcased a man named Bob whose life got 20 million times better when he took the pill and featured a ton of dick jokes. However, come on, we all know that these pills don't work. This was proven wrong by many scientists shortly after the ad's release, as increasing blood flow will not increase size in any region on the male body. Number three, a girl and her blog, Malala Yousafzai, is a brave little girl who stood up to the Taliban and fought for education. She's a hero in her country, and even many people not from her country know her story. That's what makes it so surprising that Curlon mattresses would use Malala's unfortunate situation to boost sales of their beds. Malala Yousafzai was on her way to school in her home country of Pakistan, but little did she know, there were some people looking to kill her because of her recent blogs about how the Taliban wasn't the nicest group in the country. They boarded her school bus and shot her in an attempt to kill her, but she survived and went on to go and write about the Taliban even more. She took her injury in the greatest way by not wanting revenge, but just wanting education for young girls like her in Pakistan. She went on to give a groundbreaking speech and winning a Nobel Peace Prize. It's a pretty tough story and touching speech, which makes it even more horrible that the infamous mattress company would use her situation to sell more beds. The ad depicted Malala being shot by the Taliban only to fall down and bounce on one of Kirlan's mattresses and landing to accept the Nobel Peace Prize. Some believe it was meant to pay homage to Malala and her story, but to most it just seemed like the company was trying to profit off of a dark situation. Number two, just kids here. Despite being the pseudonym for the one and only clean image to Marty McFly, Calvin Klein, the company, has had its fair share of controversial ads. The worst ads that Calvin Klein released were the underage-looking models they used for old, sex-driven ads, with some of the models actually being actually underaged. Calvin Klein's main brand would be their underwear they sell. Some of these commercials and images were controversial as they would use underage models to sell underwear. After the initial ads were banned, Calvin Klein had another run in with inappropriate models. Not learning their lesson the first time, the difference is was the fact that the models weren't actually underage, they just looked underage. For example, there was an ad that advertised bras, but they used a model who was actually 18 but looked closer to 12. Insinuating sexual behavior while using super young-looking models has been a trend Calvin Klein has been doing for a long time. Number one, just a whitening toothpaste. Out of all the entries we have so far, this one is easily the most ridiculous and most appalling. Darley toothpaste has been around for a long time, since 1900. Darley toothpaste actually used to be called Darky toothpaste, if you guys can believe it. I don't think I need to go into how disrespectful the former name was. The packaging featured an image of a wide-eyed, smiling black male wearing a top hat, monocle, and bow tie, an image associated with minstrel shows. This premise of this toothpaste relies on the stereotype of black people having dark skin, which in turn would make their teeth look more shiny and noticeable. That was the selling point of Darley Toothpaste. The TV commercials even had a slogan of Make Your Smile a Jigaboo Smile, which was extremely offensive even for those times. In 1990, after Colgate Palmolive acquired Holly and Hazel, the English name of the toothpaste was changed to Darley, 
and the image of the packaging was altered to show a racially ambiguous face and a top hat to avoid racial misunderstanding. However, the Chinese name of the brand actually remains the same today, and a Chinese advertising campaign was actually deployed to remind customers that, quote, black person toothpaste is still black person toothpaste. The Chinese characters used for the brand name translates literally to black person toothpaste. It also had the black male refer to the white male as boss in advertising. The early toothpaste had a very long life cycle in the Western markets and wasn't ever really called out on its racism until the 1980s, where it then had to change its branding and got the dazzling new name of Darley Toothpaste. It then went on store shelves for about two more decades before finally deemed racist and taken off the Western markets for good. However, Darley Toothpaste is still alive and well in Asia, as it has a large market share in many of its Asian markets. Here's what's next. As you can imagine, the internet did that thing it does where it makes something go viral and everyone has fun with it. At the expense of the company, of course. Now, to be fair, the California-based company obviously didn't mean to do this. They blamed the mistake on Chinese manufacturers and quickly pulled them off the shelves.